Here's a pretty cool looking integral from the JEE mains exam in India. And I get lots of requests here on the channel to solve integrals from the JEE main exam. So this one looked pretty fascinating. And I'm not sure which year was it from, but anyway, what matters is it looks pretty cool. So for reference purposes, we're going to call our integral here i. And as is the case with integrals from uh, competitive exams like the JEE exam or uh, the Putnam contest, integrals often have tricks in them. And this one has something to do with symmetry because we're integrating on a symmetric interval from negative to positive pi by 4, so it's got to be something to do with symmetry. So a nice check over here would be to perform a transformation from the x world to the negative x world that takes dx to negative dx. So this implies that I can write my integral i as the integral now from positive pi by 4 to negative pi by 4 of negative dx divided by 1 plus e to the negative x times cosine negative x. And the cosine of x is an even function, so we can just scratch this negative sign here. So we have negative x to the cosine of x as the argument of the exponential function. And here we have sine to the, sine to the fourth power of x. Now, sine is an odd function, but we have the exponent here being even. It's an even number. It's 4. So you'll still get positive sine to the fourth power of x plus uh, cosine to the fourth power of x. Next up, we'd like to switch up the order of the upper and lower limits so that it doesn't look too weird. And we can get rid of the negative sign that way. So these are two structures for the same integral. And I'm going to expand the structure here using the exponential term. I'm talking about e to the x times cosine x. So expanding using this term. So wait a second. I'm going to need some more writing space. So yeah. There we go. Some adjustments. Move this to the side. And that messed up the 4 over there. So yeah. Um, and back to the orange color. So e to the x times cosine x. Yeah, it fits just about right over there. So this implies that i here equals the integral from negative to positive pi by 4 of e to the x times cosine x dx. And multiplying out e to the x with this term here gives us e to the x times uh, cosine x plus 1 multiplied by sine to the fourth power of x plus cosine to the fourth power of x. So the structure in yellow and the structure in orange both represent the same integral i. So if we add them up, then we get 2 times i being equal to, using the linearity of the integration operator, the integral from negative to positive pi by 4. And up in the numerator, we have 1 plus e to the x times cosine x. And we're dividing by 1 plus e to the x times cosine x times sine to the fourth power of x plus the cosine to the fourth power of x. And my handwriting seems to be getting worse and worse as time progresses. But it's all right. You guys get the idea. So we see here that our initial guess about something to do with symmetry worked out pretty well because we can cancel out these terms here. And this implies that i equals 1 half of the integral from negative to positive pi by 4 of dx divided by sine to the fourth power of x plus cosine to the fourth power of x. And now we notice that our integrand here is an even function of x, which means that instead of integrating from negative to positive pi by 4, we could just integrate from 0 to pi by 4 and double the result. So we already have this factor of 1 half outside that cancels out with a 2. So we have the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of dx divided by sine to the fourth power of x plus the cosine to the fourth power of x. And this is pretty easy to solve. Now, what to do next? Uh, a wise choice here would be to expand using the secant of x to the fourth power because that gets me rid of the cosine term in the denominator and secant of x times the 
sine of x gives me a tangent of x. So that means I have tangent to the fourth power of x plus cosine times secant is 1, of course. So I have an integral in terms of the tangent and secant functions, which is a pretty nice combination to have. Because if I perform a substitution of letting tangent x equal u, then this implies that the square of the secant of x dx equals du. Now in the numerator up here, I have secant to the fourth power of x. So let's just break this down into the square of the secant of x and another squared secant of x. And we expand one of these secant terms as 1 plus the squared tangent of x. Okay, cool. So we let tangent of x equal u. And this implies that i is now the integral from where to where exactly. Well, as x approaches 0, u will approach 0 as well. And as x approaches pi by 4, u, which is the tangent of x, approaches 1. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 plus u squared times the differential element here, du, divided by 1 plus u to the fourth power. So the integral that we have at our disposal now is pretty easy to evaluate. All we need is some algebraic manipulation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand using 1 by u squared. So multiplying by 1 by u squared upstairs and downstairs gives me a pretty nice structure to work with. So this implies that i equals the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 plus 1 by u squared du divided by u squared plus 1 by u squared. Okay, cool. But now what? Well, I would now like to perform a substitution that gives me exactly this structure for the differential element or translates this differential element into something nicer, something quite simple. So what am I going to do? I have to let something happen and that something implies that 1 by 1 plus u squared du equals some nice differential element, let's call it d phi. So if I want 1 by 1 plus u squared as a derivative, then that means I need to let u minus 1 by u equal to the phi variable. Okay, that's sorted out, but how do I get a u minus 1 by u term in the integrand? Well, that's easy. All I have to do is add a 0. And there's never any harm in adding a 0, is there? But I need a special kind of 0, a special kind like always. And that special kind of 0 in this case is negative 2 plus 2. So yeah, that'll work out pretty well. Because if I combine u squared plus 1 by u squared minus 2 into one single thing, then that single thing is, in fact, u minus 1 by u squared. Okay, cool. And u minus 1 by u squared is just the phi variable squared, which implies that i is now the integral from where to where exactly. Well, we see that if u approaches 1, then phi will approach 1 minus 1, which is 0. And as u approaches 0, phi will approach negative infinity. So we have the integral from negative infinity to 0 of d phi divided by phi squared plus 2, which is the familiar inverse tangent structure. So this sorts out to 1 by the square root of 2 times the inverse tangent of phi divided by the square root of 2, with the limits being negative infinity and 0. So as phi approaches 0, we have the inverse tangent of 0, which is 0. And as phi approaches negative infinity, we have the inverse tangent of something approaching negative infinity, which is, of course, negative pi by 2. So all of this implies that our scary-looking integral, that was the integral from negative to positive pi by 4 of dx divided by 1 plus e to the x times cosine x, times sine to the fourth power of x plus cosine to the fourth power of x, ooh, scary, equals something quite friendly. It's pi, oh, sorry about that. It's pi divided by 2 times the square root of 2. So yeah, that was pretty cool, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.